Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today, I am bringing to you another new series of DIYs that is interchangeable. You know, I feel like this past year, I am all about those, but who doesn't love those DIYs that you can keep up all year and just interchange small pieces in and out of them to suit the season or the holidays? Those are amazing, right? They're budget friendly, and these are ones that you can keep up all year, and that's what I love about them. Today's DIY is just that. It's another one of those. This is one I think you're absolutely gonna love, and it is using Dollar Tree items, which is great, right? So I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let's do some Dollar Tree seasonal DIYing on a budget, because why not? That's what we do here, right? Right, let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll wanna stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Alrighty, so getting started, Yep, today we're going to be using these plaques that you can get year-round at Dollar Tree. We've all seen these. You're going to need two of them. These are the perfect size for today's DIY. And I'm also going to be using these terrible beads. I'm going for shape here, not color. We can fix the color. The glue I'll be using today is this wood glue by Super Glue that you can find, guess where? In the tool section, not the craft section. I'm gonna go ahead and place a bead of glue along that outside edge of the plaque. Then I'm gonna place the beads right along that bead of glue I just placed. Now I'm making a stand. This is a stand that I just recently made, but there is a twist to this stand. Not only am I using square beads this time instead of round, but I am going to be making this stand a bit different than the last one. So you'll wanna stay tuned and stay with me because I promise you this is something you're absolutely gonna love. This is a fun piece and did I say, it's a piece that you can keep up all year round that has interchangeable parts to it. Oh my goodness, that's the best part of this. So with this plaque, let's get back to DIYing. I'm gonna place beads along all four edges of this plaque, just like this. Boy oh boy, do we have a hodgepodge of items on this stand, don't we? We've got every color under the sun here, but we're gonna fix that. This is called repurposing items. That's what's great about getting budget-friendly items like this at Dollar Tree because you can make something amazing out of them just by repurposing them. That's called creating and thinking outside of the box. So like the last stand, once I've got all the beads in place and they're pretty well dry, I'm gonna go ahead and run a bead of glue along the top of all of these beads. <laughs> a bead of glue along the top of the beads. Ah, I'm a dork, I know it. Then I'm gonna place the other plaque face down that way we've got the back side of the plaque up so we don't have to worry about, yes, covering up the design on these plaques. It's just gonna be in the middle there. Nobody's gonna see it. You know how I am about these holes. So yes, I am going to take some Dollar Tree spackling and fill them in because why would we have holes if we don't need to have holes when we can use this here stuff, plug them up, and yeah, we've got a nice solid plaque without, yeah, holes in it. Quick trick. We all know that these pesky stickers are so hard to get off. They are a pain in the butt who likes taking them off. If you take a blow dryer or a heating tool, run it over the top of them and get them a bit warm, yes, they'll peel right up in one piece. I will also be incorporating some Jenga blocks. I've been doing that a lot lately, haven't I? I love Jenga blocks. If you can find this pack, I'd get this pack from Dollar Tree. You get 72 versus 36, so it's kind of like a two-in-one. I'm gonna place two rows of Jenga blocks down the center of this plaque or this soon to be stand. When I place the Jenga blocks though, I'm gonna place my first row and then when I place my second row, I'm gonna put just about a quarter of an inch, maybe even less of a gap between the two rows because this is gonna be a plaque stand. So we only want the width between the two rows of Jenga blocks to be wide enough for a plaque when a Dollar Tree's DIY wood plaques or their decorative plaques to slide in there. 
you know where I'm going with this. Isn't this gonna be great? Wait for it. Because, did I tell you, I'm also bringing to you a reversible DIY plaque that's gonna go in this mm -hmm, DIY stand that we're making here that you can keep up, did I tell you this too, all year round. Interchangeable parts, I love it. For the feet of the stand, I'm gonna use these caps. This is an assortment that you can get at Walmart by Plaid. It comes with eight of them, two different sizes, four of each size. I'm using the smaller ones for this stand. And yeah, I'm just gonna glue them to the bottom. I didn't fill in the holes on the plaque on the bottom of this. If you want to, you can, I'm not going to. Nobody's gonna see it unless they flip your stand over. You better hope they're not. Why would they do that? My stand is dry and it is looking good, right? No, but it's about to. Amazing what a little bit of paint does. I'm gonna use some of Waverly's Ivory today. I'm going with a nice subtle cream versus the cashew. So I'm sticking with the lighter color because I wanna keep the stand as neutral as I can so it'll go with each of the holidays or the seasons for those DIY plaques that I will be bringing to you throughout the year that are going to slide into this stand. Isn't that cool? Today's is going to be reversible. I'm not sure if everyone will be reversible. I'm surely going to try to aim for that, but we'll see. So with this stand, I had an envision of what color I wanted it to be when I first started out. Today, you're going to see this is an example of me not liking where I was going with the color. Wasn't super happy with it, but you'll see how I fix it. So again, I started off with a good couple base coats of the ivory. Then being true to my nature, I went in with the walnut stain while the ivory was wet and just kind of dry brush stroked over that ivory, trying to give it that clouded, smooth look. But as it started to dry, that walnut stain started to turn kind of a... Mm, not the brown I like. I don't know what happened. I don't know if there's something in the ivory paint that kind of changed the color of the walnut, but I wasn't super excited about the color that it turned out. It might be for some, but I wasn't feeling it. So because I wasn't feeling it, I decided I was going to try and fix it and decided to go in with some of this Hello Hobby Cafe Muir chalk paint. Yes, what is that word? <laughs> Oh my word. Anyway, this chocolate brown, that's what I'm gonna call it. So I decided just to slap some of this on. Now fear not, I am not going to leave it looking like this. You know that. I thought that just kind of darkening this up a bit would kind of go with my decor a bit more. Now keep in mind, when I do these DIYs, I do them based on the color and the style of my decor. I'm just merely, like I always say, bringing you the idea of the project and it's up to you to have it suit your decor. Do it in the colors in which are gonna work for you. And that's where my favorite saying comes in. You take what you like, you leave what you don't, and you get creative, and guess what you do? You make it your own, you put your own twist on it. Once it was dry, I must have forgot to press record. I did go over this with some sandpaper to kind of smooth it out, blend it in, distress it. Now I'm happy. The plaque that I'm using for today's stand is this pumpkin plaque. This is a wall decor plaque that Dollar Tree has in stock right now. You see what I'm doing, you know the drill. We're gonna fill in those holes. On the back side of this, because this is a double-sided plaque, one side's gonna have fabric, one side's gonna be painted, so I figured the side that had the fabric on it, I would do the decorative side because the lettering and the glitter is elevated. Even if you try to take sandpaper to the other side, it's still elevated, so if you go to paint it, it's gonna show through. So just use fabric on that side if you're doing this DIY with me or even paper. Since this is a blank canvas on the back side, I'm gonna go ahead and use this for my painted side and give it a good base coat of Waverly's white chalk paint. And this paint, yes, a subscriber sent it to me. You guys rock. Once I got a good couple coats of paint on it, I'm gonna use some blue painter's tape and I'm gonna section off some sections of this plaque because what is my Halloween theme this year? candy corn. How fun is that? It's so cute. The orange part, I'm going to be using this pumpkin chalk paint by Hello Hobby. I will tell you that when working with the Hello Hobby, I have noticed that it is in fact a thinner paint than the Waverly chalk paint. It is a bit thicker than Apple Barrel and Folk Art, but it's definitely not a one coat paint like Waverly is a lot of times, which is kind of a bummer. But it is what it is. We're not gonna dwell on it. We're gonna work with what we have. I am loving the color orange that this is. It's just gonna take a couple coats. So like me, 
I turn on my oven to 135 degrees and I'm gonna pop it in the oven for about five minutes so my paint gets good and dry. If you're uncomfortable with that, don't do it. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just telling you what I do because I'm comfortable with doing it. If it's still hot where you live, take it outside and let it dry outside. Once it's dry, look at how satisfying this is. You just peel that tape right up and you've got a perfect line. I am going to take some sandpaper and just kind of smooth out that line where the orange paint and the white paint meet because I don't want a line when I place, guess what color I'm putting down there? Yellow, yes. And like I said, I am going to use the same tape because why wouldn't I? Place it on the bottom half here using some of Hello Hobbies. What paint is this? Ah yes, this is Tuscan Sun. This is very similar to Waverly's Maze. I'm gonna give this bottom section a nice couple good coats of this Tuscan Sun yellow paint to make, uh-huh. Can I say it again just to drive you all crazy? Yes, a candy corn pumpkin. How cute is this already? It's gonna be cuter when it's done. And don't forget, we still have a backside of this pumpkin to DIY. That one's gonna be a fall and harvest one. I can't resist it. Who doesn't like satisfying when you pull something up like that and it comes out perfect? How fun is this? Pumpkin needs a stem, so I'm gonna go with Hello Hobbies. Uh, it's a brown, what was that? Cafe something, your, yes. And I'm gonna give the stem a good coat of brown because a pumpkin stem is brown or beige. Whatever color you want it to be. I want mine to be brown because guess what I'm gonna do next? Yep, I'm gonna add some stitching to this. And can I just tell you that this new paintbrush that I found is amazing for stitching. You can find it at Walmart. I don't know the brand name, shame on me for that, but it comes in a five pack of smaller paint brushes. It is an assorted pack. There are no larger paint brushes in it. It is all just the fine paint brushes. And I love this brush. It is perfect. I picked up a couple packs because you know I do so much stitching on my tiered trays and my DIYs and this works perfect for it. If you've got a brown sharpie or a black sharpie you can do that too. For the wording on this pumpkin I'm going to use this new font I found. These are a poster board sticker that you can get at Dollar Tree and I was loving this font so this was the perfect DIY excuse to use it. And this pumpkin is going to say trick or treat. Now I will tell you, you are going to need two sets of these poster board letters because uh, I needed, oh, I was short a T and an R. You get two of each letter, but there are three T's and three R's in this. Yeah, for treat or and trick. I said that backwards, trick or treat. <laughs> but anyway, you see where I'm going. You're gonna need two sets of letters. Now, if you can't find these poster board letters at your Dollar Tree or your Dollar Tree just stinks and you don't get a lot of the items that I get in mine, guess what you can do? Mm-hmm. If you really want to do this DIY and you want these letters, you can head on over to Linda's Etsy store where she has done a recreation of these letters and she has made them available for instant digital download, which means if you've got a Cricut, you can buy this for $1.50, download it to your computer, upload it to Cricut Design Space, and there it it's ready for you to cut out in vinyl, cardstock, whatever it is your heart desires. Or you can have her cut and send them to you for the bargain price of $5 with free shipping. Guess where you can find the link to Linda's Etsy store if you're interested in this? Mm-hmm. In the description box below. And would you look how fun this is? I'm not going to show you this side done yet because guess what? We still have another side to do. So you're going to see pictures of this in its entirety when it's done. Let's move on to the second... DIY, the other side, making this reversible. So yeah, this side's a hot mess, but that's okay because we're using fabric for this side. But to kind of mute out the orange and the decorative side of this plaque, I figured I'd go in with some ivory and just slap on a quick coat of paint just to kind of disguise it so it doesn't show through the fabric. When doing this though, I do want to say be gentle on this side because remember we decorated the other side and we don't want to ruin that side. And sometimes when I'm painting these plaques, I don't always take my time when I'm doing just one side of it because I don't typically care what the other side looks like. But in this instance, because this is, guess what, reversible, we got to take a little bit of extra care. Be a little bit more careful. Take our time just a bit more. So maybe don't slap on the paint. 
This year's fall fabric theme is gonna be this fat quarter stack here that I got at Walmart by Creative. Would you look at these fabrics? Oh my goodness, I am obsessed. I love these. The colors are amazing. Still traditional, but a little bit different. Again, this is by Create It. You can get this bundle at Walmart in the fabric section for about $5.96. Because I'm going with fabric for this side of the plaque, we do need to adhere it on. And so to adhere it on, you can do that very easily just by using some Mod Podge and giving your plaque a good base coat of Mod Podge. Again, we wanna be careful. We don't want that Mod Podge spilling out onto the sides of our plaque because we've got one side already done. I'm gonna keep reminding you of that because I kept reminding myself of it because I didn't wanna have to go back and fix it. And then we're gonna go ahead and place our fabric over the Mod Podge. And I just need to point out to you, look how much just one coat of paint really kind of muted out the decorative side of this plaque. And that was all we were going for for this. So it kind of helps those fine little details that you do just to kind of make your DIY look a bit better. You don't want any of that decorative stuff on this plaque showing through your fabric, right? Right. Okay, so back to DIY. Once I've got the fabric on, I am in fact gonna go back in with a second coat of Mod Podge over the top of the fabric. I'm gonna give this a couple hours to dry. I'm gonna, again, put it in my oven. If it's hot outside, put it outside, but Mod Podge does take a minute to dry, so you're gonna wanna let it get good and dry. Once it's good and dry, you're gonna cut off that excess fabric, giving you a perfectly covered, yes, pumpkin plaque with this beautiful fabric from the Fab Bundle that we got at Walmart. I love this. For this pumpkin, I am gonna distress the edges. I wanna add some shading. I wanna add a bit of dimension. And so to do that, I'm gonna use some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. Using a stiffer paint brush or a makeup brush, I actually cut the bristles down on this and made them shorter by doing that. It really does make your brush a bit stiffer. I can then put my brush in the Distress Ink and I can shade the edges. Just going along those edges in a circular motion is gonna just give it some dimension. It's gonna add depth to it and it's going to distress it and make it look aged. That's what we're going for, right? Once I get the sides done, I am going to go in and add the depth to it. And I wanna do that just by adding two lines to the side to make it look more like a pumpkin to give it some dimension. Yes, and it's amazing what just these two lines do when you do that. I have this embellishment from one of the fall harvest plaques that I got this year, and I don't throw stuff like this away because I love the shape of it. And it's something that you can very easily alter or repurpose for another DIY, and that's what I'm doing today. And I did add some distressing to it, although I didn't show you. This is going to get hot glued right into the center of this plaque. How fun is that, huh? Pieces that you just kind of hold on to and then you find a purpose for them later on. I love Wood Letters by Crafter Square. For this DIY, you're gonna need just one pack of these because you only need one of each letter. So keep your eye open for these at Dollar Tree, pick them up. And with these, I'm gonna spell out the word harvest and I am using, guess what I'm using? Yes, Waverly's Antique Wax to do that because it is the perfect brown for this. And the word harvest is going to go on this embellishment tag that I pulled out of, yes, my stash and I'm repurposing it. Now, had I just put harvest on the pumpkin itself without this embellishment, it would have looked okay, but look at how great it looks being added onto the top of this embellishment tag that I kept because I didn't throw it away. I added it to my stash, not knowing when I was gonna find use for it, but when I saw it, I thought it is perfect. It is the perfect touch to add to this pumpkin reversible plaque that we're making for our stand. Now again, I'm just putting this out there because here on my channel, we are all about options and alternatives. If you can't find those poster board letters and you can't find the wood crafter square letters, but you really want to do this DIY, you can head on over to the Etsy store where she has again recreated these wood letters for the word harvest in instant digital download for a dollar, or you can have her cut and send you a vinyl decal for the bargain price of three dollars. Again, you know where you can find Linda's Etsy store. Come on now in the description box below. Because this is in fact a fall and harvest DIY, it calls for raffia instead of twine, I know. But raffia, it can be unruly to work with, a pain to work with because of how stiff and how folded and bent it is. You know what, if you wet it, it will straighten it out, it will soften it up, and it makes it so easy to work with. 
This pumpkin needs some raffia around the stem. And of course, I am going to stay true to my nature and finish both these sides off with a raffia bow instead of a twine bow. Seriously, I love this. Look at how fun this is. Double-sided, reversible. Let's go put it in the stand. Okay, I gotta say, I love this DIY. And what I love about it is that Dollar Tree has these plaques for every holiday. So how fun is it gonna be to DIY a plaque for this stand for all year round? Yes, I love that. Who doesn't love these kind of DIYs? Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Michelle, who is bringing to us her recreation of my Dollar Tree DIY milk jugs. Loving, loving, loving your take on these, and I love how you weren't afraid to add color to it, Michelle. Turned out amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your creations with us today. If you're interested in being featured as a crafter of the day in one of my videos, submit a picture of one of your recreations of a DIY that I've done to either Facebook or Instagram. If you wanna DM it to me, you can. Then you just simply have to look out for the end of each video to see if it's your DIY that I will be featuring in that given video. My blog is up and running. I've got a few blogs posted. If you're interested in following me on this next chapter of my life and all the amazing paths that it takes me on, you can find the link to it in the description box below. This is where I get personal. Everything is personal, including this blog. How fun is this stand? I love this, using Jenga blocks, using plaques. There are so many DIYs that we can do using these to interchange those pieces. And I'm so excited to bring you more of these pieces as the seasons and the holidays come. I hope you all enjoyed today's Dollar Tree interchangeable DIY. Yeah, please make sure to give this video mm -hmm, a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and the comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, and bye for now, everybody.